So uh, once again, uh, good afternoon, good morning, and good evening from wherever you are connecting. So uh, welcome to the breakout builder. We have uh, with us uh, Fariski Vidyan. Uh, so welcome Fariski. So he works as a security engineering manager at Traveloka. And Fariski actively contributes to security community in the area of vulnerabilities in open source application. And uh, he has been a regular participant at some popular uh, CTF events across the world. So today he'll be talking about uh, uh, large scale application attack surface management. So uh, once again, welcome Fariski. Uh, you are uh, you can share your screen, and uh, your talk will be typically around uh, some forty five minutes, last ten minutes for the questions. And meanwhile, the audience can post some questions on the uh, Q and A. So you can share your questions uh, there. So uh, yeah. All right. Okay. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me in this session. I'm very happy to have this opportunity to share about my talk, Rock Scale Application Attack Surface Management. My name is Farsky Vidyan. Uh, I'm an information security professional working in Singapore. In my free time, I like to play Capture the Flag or CTF. Sometimes I also like to try to find vulnerabilities, particularly in open source applications, because I like to review the code. Currently, I lead the security engineering team at one of the leading technology companies here in Southeast Asia. Originally, I'm from Indonesia, but I've been living here in Singapore since 2017. So the agenda for today's talk is about application attack surface management. I will begin by discussing on how and why application attack surface management can be beneficial and helpful for application security program. And then I will continue. Uh, by discussing on how we can manage application attack surface on a large scale. And I will also cover enumeration and analysis process of application attack surface and the code scrutiny testability and its relevancy with the application attack surface. And then uh, last, I will discuss about the room for improvements, particularly for us, the application security community. So before I continue further, I want to share about an article that I read some time ago. So this article was written by Daniel Misler. He's one of the OAPS project leaders. So the title is quite thought provoking for me because the title is, if you are not doing continuous asset management, you are not doing security. So I think this is also applicable for applications. So if you are developing softwares, you need to maintain comprehensive and real time inventory about your application attack surface because it reflects how much you care about your application security. Then if we see the OAPS API security top 10, we can see in the 2019 and 2023, the improper asset management and improper inventory management is listed as one of the top weaknesses in the API. And if you take a look at the CWE database, insufficient technical documentation is registered as one of the items. So we can say that this kind of issue is common and acknowledged by the community. Then if we see the problems from attacker's perspective, or let's say you are a bug bounty hunter, if you know all possible ways to interact with the application, I believe you will find more vulnerabilities. Why? Because by knowing all possible ways to interact with the applications, you can find unintended behavior of the application by triggering curtain unintended interaction. And if it causes security impact, we call it a vulnerability. On the other hand, when you are a security engineer or you are the person who, are, who is responsible for securing the application in your organization, maybe uh, you have a dilemma in choosing uh, what security activity that needs to be prioritized because maybe you have limited time, you have limited resource. So whatever security activities that uh, you want to choose and prioritize, just remember in the end, the things that are really matter is related to exploitable vulnerability. And you need to be confident whatever security activity that you choose to be included in your application security program, you should cover um, most of the application attack scenarios for your application. And then uh, this kind of situation is also quite common. 
let's say there is a bug bounty hunter reported affordability. Oh, I find affordability on blah, blah, blah endpoint. And then surprise, surprise, the internal team didn't even know that endpoint exists. So this kind of situation should be avoided. And I believe we can use the application at express management to avoid this situation. So we define uh, a text surface on applications as anything that includes entry points, interfaces, and any exposed components that can influence the code execution flow. And remember, different applications have different kind of text surface. Web application is different with mobile. Mobile application is different with desktop application. Even in web applications, they can have different kind of interface, such as REST API, GraphQL, uh, WebSocket, and so on. And we define application attack service management as a practice to gain comprehensive understanding and accurate list of application attack surface. Now the question is how comprehensive? It depends on the application and the scale. Because if you want to manage the attack surface of a single application, it's different if you want to do the same uh, to the hundreds of applications or even thousands of applications. But maybe before we continue, you want to know the benefit of application attack surface management. So for every stages of security from identification to response, we can get the benefit starting from identification. We can know the latest state of our application attack surface confidently. And then in the protection, we can use the information from application attack surface management for security testing and security review. For detection, we can use the information to enrich our application attack detection. And for the response, we can use the information as reference during application security incident response. Or maybe next time there is a bug bounty hunter report a vulnerability on a critical endpoint, you can just use the information from your application resource management as starting point for the analysis. And then when we are doing application attack source management, there are tenets or principles that we need to keep in mind. First, you need to understand the unique needs, and then you need to understand the application correctly. Both are truly totally the core principle of DevSecOps. So some people, when they hear about DevSecOps, they only think about installing security in the pipeline. But actually DevSecOps is about mindset. It's about culture. So the first thing, when you want to embed security in your software development process, you need to really understand about your business. You need to really understand about your application. If you, you think you, you are already doing DevSecOps, but you don't know about your application, you don't know about the behavior of your application, you don't know that all the possible interactions uh, that your application has, yeah, maybe you need to reconsider again about your approach. Then we also want to automate aggressively because nowadays, especially in agile organizations, change can be very often. Maybe tomorrow or next week, your application is already changed. Maybe some developers are adding new API endpoints or changing the behavior of existing uh, feature. So rather than we do the attack surface enumeration and analysis manually, we want to make the process automated. And then we can start small. Uh, we don't need to have 100% coverage or high quality context from the beginning. We can start small and then try to improve the quantity and quality incrementally. And then there are common challenges if we want to uh, implement app application attack surface management. The most obvious one, the scale, the size and the number of the application. And then the agility, how often your applications are changed. The silo, lack of collaboration, lack of documentation, or maybe one development team is isolated with another. They can be blockers for application attack surface management process. And then the maturity, the maturity of the application development. Is your development team using CI/CD or freestyle development? Yeah, because it can affect the process of application attack surface management. And then the complexity, the technical complexity of the application. Is your application using framework or custom implementation? Because the more complex your application is, the more complex the application attack surface management process. But that doesn't mean it's impossible. By having a good technical understanding about your application, that doesn't matter how complex your application is, 
you can always try to uh, analyze its attack surface. So the point is, if you want to invest for long-term application security that truly matters, you can start by focusing on attack surface management. Imagine you want to secure a building. The first thing that you want to know is you want to know the doors, the windows, and any ways that can be used to enter building from the outside. And you need to know if let's say next week, uh, there will be new window or new door, or there is a change uh, of the door. Maybe someone install new lock or new material for the door. You need to know because by knowing the entry points, you can uh, be more confident in securing the building. And that's also applicable for applications. Now the question is, what if there are too many applications? This is especially true for an organization with high number of applications for their customers. Or maybe nowadays we know the terms like microservices. Maybe user is only seeing your application as one, but in reality, under your applications, you have hundreds of microservices or even thousands of host names, API and points. And we consider each one of them as a single application. Then when you want to manage the application attack surface uh, on a large scale, you can start with high level catalog. Let's say you have web applications, then you want to maintain a list of host names first. But you also need to find a way to automatically update the catalog because maybe next week or next month, uh, some people in your organization add in new host names and you need to know as soon as possible. Ideally, yeah, the, the, the people should inform you before they add new host name, but just in case, uh, just in case they, they, they just add without informing you, uh, you also need to know beforehand. And then after you have the high level catalog, you need to enrich the catalog with useful information for security. For example, for web application, you need to know the possible path or endpoint. And for each path or endpoint, you need to know the request or response pack and the technology stack used by the application. And then the arrangement itself also should be automated. Why? Because if you are doing it manually, every time there's a change, it's not scalable. So you need to find a way to automate it. And then we cannot rely 100% on automation because there is a possibility that maybe the automation missed something. You need to review. Maybe, for example, okay, you maintain high-level catalog internally, but you also review the catalog from external perspective using OSINT, maybe using Sodan. And then if, let's say, you can find a unique hostname or new hostname that is not familiar, but actually belong to your organization, you need to uh, find out what's wrong with your process, how you can miss that. When creating high-level catalog, yeah, uh, you can use OSINT to uh, enumerate the uh, attack surface possible, yeah, like possible host names from external perspective. Actually, uh, I had discussions with many security uh, team members from many organizations Many of them actually rely solely on OSINT, let's say for detect subdomain of their main domain. But actually, if you are part of internal organizations, you can use your internal information to get the attack surface. For example, like the subdomain, you can read DNS record. For example, let's say your organization is using AWS and then your organization is storing the domain records in the Amazon Route 53. You need to read the record directly from the Amazon Route 53. Don't do from OSINT. Um, you can do it periodically, or you can create a system where whenever there is a new change, you can uh, read the record again automatically and store it in a database. However, you also still need to review the results periodically um, yeah, to, to, to find any possible missing information. Again, you can use OSINT or yeah, any, any kind of external information. And then you can uh, store the information uh, or the high-level catalog in interoperable format, such as YAML, because by storing that in this interoperable format, if you want to enrich the information, maybe adding more information, 
related to useful uh, context for uh, text reverse analysis. You can add them as new fields in the YAML. You can also in, uh, do the integration with dynamic application query testing, reading all the host names from the YAML, or you want to do cross check with web application firewall, and you can use it for anything related to uh, security, like application security, posture management. So rather than you store it in PDF or spreadsheet, better to store it in uh, interoperable format. Okay, then about the enrichment. Um, maybe having high level catalog is not enough. You want to know more context about your attack surface. For example, if you have web applications, you want to know possible routes and endpoints. Um, first, we can read the documentation, but we prefer documentation to be standardized. Um, and also, if possible, codified, just like infrastructure as code, but in this case, documentation as code, or at least codified, or having clear contract, just like in open API. By having this kind of documentation, we can enumerate a text surface easily, and then we can ensure that we are not missing anything, even with this, we can create automated security tests seamlessly. So because this is very useful, if, you, if your organization is running application software development process, you need to consider to adopt this. And then for web application itself, if we talk about application attack surface, we want to map the host name with a list of possible entry points and the useful details like route or endpoint, the request specification, expected HTTP headers or cookies, request parameters, and then also the response specification. And we can add more context to assist the security reviewers. Um, for example, we can add context about reachability, whether an endpoint is public or private, or whether a specific uh, path is actually doing create, read, update, or delete operation and applicable security controls like authentication, authorization, red limit, or MFA, reachable security hotspot. Maybe you want to automate uh, code analysis flow or uh, to, to detect whether for curtain uh, path, whether the code reach uh, security hotspot like database access or file system operations. And most importantly, link to code implementation. Why link is important? Because next time security reviewer want to analyze the application attack surface, so the implementation of curtain and point, they can just click the link. This is the example of uh, application attack surface for a uh, web API, and it's only for one route here. And this is only for display purpose. That's why I put them on the table. But in, in practical, you can store uh, the information in YAML. Okay, here we have api.example.tld with slash APIs one slash update profile route. And then it is expecting post requests with application uh, slash JSON content type and authentication token in the header with uh, this JSON format. The response is also JSON. For the reachability, is it public? Is it doing a read operation? And it has authentication and MFA security control. And from this API endpoint, actually, it, it has uh, flow to, to user service and database access, the security hotspot. And then there is a link to the GitHub implementation. So imagine if you can achieve something like this, but for all your endpoints, for all your web, uh, web applications, for all your applications, it, it will be very, very useful for security reviewers. Even you can do some kind of threat modeling just from this. But remember, a uh, web application can uh, have different nature. Um, they can have REST API, they can have SOAP, they can have gRPC, GraphQL, WebSocket, and so on. So you need to really understand what interface or what kind of technology that is used by your application. And when we want to enumerate or analyze a text surface, we can do static analysis, for example, we can get the available routes from application code. This code is just the example of Node.js express code. We can get all the possible routes by reading the code. We can also create some kind of 
automated code parsing to uh, get this. And not only route, if you want to uh, get more contact, like request response data or any kind of things that we want to know, yeah, we can also create parser to uh, analyze the code statically. And if the application has contract like gRPC, we can also analyze the contract, especially gRPC is contract by design. So we can use that as reference for attack surface management. And this is all of Java code that has strongly defined uh, route and response and request parameters. Here, developers are not accessing the request data directly from, let's say, HTTP self-flat request object. But here, all the parameters are encapsulated inside the classes. So when we want to uh, enumerate the attack surface from this code, it is easy for us because this is uh, this is good for enumeration process and automation is more straightforward. Actually, there is a tool to help you to detect web application routes, um, but this route dash detect uh, tool is only useful for getting the routes. Uh, no context about, let's say, a request or response. But you can always try to use regex or pattern matching tool like SAMGRAB with custom rules to get what you need. And remember, code for client side also can be useful for attack surface analysis. This is often overlooked because when we are talking about application attack surface, many of us just focusing on server side code. But remember, client side code also has certain attack factor like XSS or open redirect. It's limited by word to be analyzed to enrich our attack surface details. And maybe it's, this is also um, open a possibility if we want to standardize format. For example, in API, we have open API. But for front end, like client side code, I'm not aware of that. Yeah, correct me if I'm wrong. Please let me know if you know. Actually, we have some kind of format for defining the contract for front end. But yeah, yeah, if we don't have, maybe we as community can create one. Okay, so regarding static analysis, we know that from analyzing the code, we can get a text surface and we get the context of the application. So we can have a discussion with developers to enhance how the attack surfaces are exposed from the code. So if we want to do static analysis or any kind of automations, they can be performed effectively and efficiently. So the ideal state is we want the code to have clear contract, like implementing open API, and the attack surface should be able to be enumerated automatically. So uh, if you can achieve this, that is very, very good. But alternatively, we, we can still do the black box analysis, the traditional enumeration and crawling from external perspective. But remember, it may not provide a complete and accurate assessment because it's not touching the... and you can improve your process incrementally. And there is one alternative approach to generate a text surface list by capturing and analyzing the actual traffic flow from the real uh, customers. So this is uh, very good because uh, we, don't need, we don't need to, to touch the code and then we can just see from the network, we, we generate all the possible paths, requests, response from there. But remember, it's, it's still not a guarantee to cover 100% of attack surface because uh, there, there may be, there may be um, a attack surface that is never accessed by customer. Yeah, it's debatable because if some if there is an attack surface that uh, never never accessed by uh, your customer, then the exploitation likelihood is lesser. Yeah, but if you want to cover 100%, you need to think about it. You need to find other workarounds. And it also may have difficulty handling and telling the difference of dynamic paths, for example, slash API slash dynamic value. Actually, it has one handler, but it it, it accepting dynamic value, but because the network analysis doesn't have any context about your application, it considers them as uh, multiple routes. This is also alternative and very interesting, runtime instrumentation. 
actually with runtime instrumentation, you can try to hook code functions that are responsible, let's say for route registration, uh, and then you lock all the parameters. For example, you can use Frida to intercept the route registration function in Node.js Express, and then you lock all route patterns. Or any kind of programming language, any kind of framework, I believe it's possible because the principle is similar with debugging. In debugging, you try to hook into the function, you breakpoint at the function, and then you try to inspect the parameters. Uh, in this case, you do it automatically, and you want to intercept the function that is responsible for registering routes. And this is very useful if the code is too complex, if you want to do traditional static analysis. Yeah, but this requires technical understanding about runtime instrumentation. So you need to consider whether you want to invest your time and resource to do this or not. There's also a concept called gateway. And this web application gateway can be useful to define and isolate application attack surface. So the basic idea is instead of exposing the application directly, you put it under network edge. And you can define the contract on the gateway. But this has caveat uh, because uh, you don't have context about the code. So maybe you can have context about request, response, and the paths. But if you want to have more context, uh, just like what we shown before, uh, you need to uh, still analyze the code. OK, we already talked about web application. What about? other applications such as mobile and desktop applications. So the principle is the same. We need to know the attack surface. But for this mobile application, I see many security people or security testers, they focus on uh, APIs that are used by the mobile applications. And they consider them as attack surface of mobile applications. But you need to remember, APIs are web applications. So they are actually with uh, a web application attack surface. So for attack surface of mobile application, I think that we should only uh, include uh, attack surface specific to the client side mobile application. And they have many actually, and often overlooked by security testers. For example, mobile application can have deep link or universal link. Basically, it's a link, just like normal link, but it can have custom scheme, host, path, query string, it can be clicked by user in, let's say, in email, SMS, chat application, or browser. And then uh, the apps will be spawned by the mobile platform based on the link. Because the link can contain attacker's input, uh, maybe it can cause unintended vulnerability. Exposed components, such as in Android, we know we have activity, service, broadcast receiver, and content provider. They are also a text surface. And any kind of IPC or internal process communication, like short memory, port listener, and Mac message. Remember, your application or your mobile application can listen to a local port. And then any other applications in the same device can send data to that local port. So you need to know whether your application actually has that kind of behavior or not. And any features where external influence data are processed in the client side, we need to consider them as a text surface, and we need to do enumeration analysis on them. For the enrichment, same with uh, web application, we can start with reachability. But because this is client side mobile application, we need to define whether uh, it is reachable via link, just like deep link or universal link, or inter process or intra process. And then the reachable security hotspot. A mobile application has a quite different uh, nature of vulnerability. For example, in mobile applications, we know a concept called web view, and it's very common to uh, co to uh, to contain vulnerability. Uh, so if there is an attack surface that has a uh, path to the web view, uh, we need to take a look. Or native execution, because mobile, mobile application has capability to interact with native library. And it opens a possibility of memory corruption, like buffer overflow, use after free, out of bound, or whatever kind of memory corruption. So you need to know if your application is affected or not. And then same with a web application, we also want to have link to code implementation. So this is the example. We have Android application with an entry point, and this is example of deep link with custom scheme, my example app, uh, and then 
we can access that with yeah, slash main slash user profile view. Uh, also, it, it accepts query string uh, like this one, like the example, and it's reachable via link. And it has access to security hotspot, which is web view, and there's a link to the implementation. Imagine if you have this for your uh, mobile application, uh, it will help security reviewers. And then if we want to do static analysis for mobile applications, for example, in Android, we can start from configuration file, uh, in this case, the Android manifest. But you need to remember Android manifest maybe not contain everything that you need because it still opens possibility for dynamic implementation, just like in this example. You can see there is a deep link with scheme, my example app, and then the host is main. And then the path pattern contains wildcard, 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 wildcard. And this wildcard will be matched by the application in code level. So that's why analyzing manifest may be not enough. You still need to analyze further in, in the code. And in the code, we can know that uh, the uh, URI will be matched with the URI matcher. And then based on the match, it will be handled by different handlers. Uh, this become complicated. Yeah, but if your application has this, you need to know and you need to aware. Or maybe if your developer is doing uh, the deep link in smart way, maybe they can use library that can define deep link with annotation. Uh, if your developer is doing this, your job will be much easier. Yeah, but again, for the query string, it's still flexible. We can see that uh, the developer can access the query string uh, freely. It, it's better if we can define something like contract, just like open API, but for mobile applications. Yeah, you can imagine something like that. Um, yeah, you can have discussion with developers to enhance how the mobile application like surface are exposed from the code. And if you can design the code to have clear contract, it will be good. And also, I'm not aware about any kind of contract standard just like Open API, but for mobile applications. But if we can have something like that, yeah, it will be very helpful. Runtime instrumentation is also possible for mobile application. Just like in the previous code, we know that with Android manifest alone, it's not enough to enumerate all attack surface. We need to analyze the code. And then in the previous code, we know that the URI matcher is used to uh, detect, uh, to, to uh, route the deep links. So we can use Frida, for example, to hook into URI matcher function and we lock all the parameters. Just like yeah, this example of the Frida code to hook the URI matcher and lock all the possible uh, match pattern. What about desktop and other applications? The basic idea is the same. We start with enumeration and then we want enrich the details. We find a way to automate and we want to improve the code to make analysis and automation easier. You need to understand about the specific nature of your applications. For example, you need to know desktop applications can also have deep link. In the past, uh, there were many desktop applications that were vulnerable with uh, some kind of yeah uh, RCE just because maybe uh, it has deep link and then deep link can contain user input and then the user input actually processed uh, insecurely by the application. So you need to know how uh, input from external can reach to your application. So if we put everything together, uh, we can have a discovery surface to uh, enumerate all the, let's say, high-level catalog. In this case, uh, it, it tries to read the DNS surfaces to get all the host names. And then after we have the all the host names, we also map to the, let's say, repository of the application. And then the repository will be analyzed by the process in CI/CD with linter auto documentation, maybe using op open API. Uh, and then uh, we are doing ad hoc attack first analysis. We do static analysis, dynamic analysis, runtime instrumentation. And then there is an aggregator surface to uh, compare everything, normalize everything, and enrich the information. Finally, we store the information in database where we can uh, display the results on the dashboard. Uh, from the dashboard, we can uh, use the information for automated security testing. We can notify security team if there is a new uh, attack surface, for example, if there is any new change in the attack surface, and the security team can do product assessment from this uh, information. 
Okay, and then there is a concept called code security testability. So it is a concept about measuring how well the software supports the use of security tests. And you need to remember, secure coding is not only about crafting code to prevent vulnerabilities. It is also about creating code that facilitates and enhance the ease and effectiveness of security testing. If your code is hard to be tested, if your code is hard to be enumerated for the attack surface, then it's not good. Of the code is low. Imagine if we have PHP code like this, we have multiple files, and then the developer is just using dollar underscore post to read the uh, request data from client, and then the data is passed to object, and there is another uh, value reader, maybe using query string, uh, that will be very complicated. And this kind of code has very low code security testability. Maybe uh, you want to use framework like Spring Boot in Java. It has clear way to define the route. But in this example, it's still not enough. Why? Even, uh, even though uh, the route is defined with at post mapping here, we can still see uh, there is a parameter called a map uh, with request body map string to object here. So with this kind of code, the developer is still can freely access the map and use any key without any clear structure and not clearly defined. So because it's not clearly defined, there can be a case where unexpected uh, request will be used by the developer inside the code. And because here there is also HTTP server request object, uh, the object is also can be used freely by the developer. Maybe we want something like this where everything are clearly defined the route, the request, the response. If uh, developers want to arbitrarily read the request parameter, they cannot do that because everything already encapsulated in the Java class. And then uh, with this, we can enumerate the attack surface better and we can have better code security testability. So how we can improve the code security testability and uh, the attack surface so we can agree on standardized way to expose entry points and how they are processed. We want to enforce all code contributors to use the standard. And we want to detect the deviation because let's say you already have the standard and it's already good, but then there is a new joiner uh, in your organization and then introduce new code that is not following the standard and then exposing a text surface with, uh, with its own way. So that's why we uh, we want to enforce the standards and detect deviation and prevent the deviation if possible. And to make it more streamlined, we want to measure the standard adoption as security metrics. So if let's say you have multiple teams in your organization, you can say that, okay, the team has good script practice if their applications can be enumerated and can be analyzed for the attack surface easily. We can also use maturity level. We can start from level one, starting without any kind of attack surface management, all go through the level five, where the attack surface details are consistently updated using automation. There is a regular manual or automated assessment to ensure completeness. And you want to measure this to determine your process. And finally, uh, we have room of improvements for us, application security community, what we can do. Uh, we can raise more awareness about application attack surface management or code security testability as general. Maybe we can add more standardization about application attack surface management. We can also try to standardize entry point format. In the previous slides, I show example about open API. But apart from open API, let's say for front end, for client side code, for mobile application code, at least until now, I'm not aware about standard. Yeah, maybe I missed that. Please let me know if you know. Yeah, but uh, if if we can have something like that, something like Open API, but for everything, for any kind of attack surface, it will be very very good. We can also develop and promote software libraries for declaring entry points. Yeah, with the standardized format that we already have. 
or we can also develop and promote security tools that can help in detecting and analyzing the application attack surface. Uh, we already have open source tool for detecting route. Maybe we can also try to develop a tool that can not uh, not only uh, detecting routes, but also other contexts like request response or any other information that we need to know for application attack surface. All right, so that's all. Hopefully it's useful for you. If you have any question, feel free. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Fariski. Uh, so do we have any questions? Okay, so we have a question. Uh, it says, uh, this looks like a laborious process. Any tools used or you do you write your own or doesn't ASPM help in automating the managing attack surface? Okay, so uh, I know there are many vendors or open source tools that are providing such capabilities, um, but you need to understand that perhaps, or maybe your your organization or your applications have unique needs, just like the TNETs or principles that I saw before, right? Um, at least um, in my organization, uh, we try to develop by ourselves because we have uh, research and we we have uh, yeah we, we we have team members that are doing that. But let's say you have limited time and resource, you can consider to find any tools or vendors that maybe can be suitable for you. Um, I think there is a vendor. Yeah, I, I don't think we can talk about the vendor name here, right? But I think there are many vendors that are providing service for application attack surface management. Many of them also providing uh, some kind of like OSINT way to enumerate attack surface. But also there is a vendor that is capable to instrument your application using agent. So use the agent, you install the agent to the applications, and then the agent will try to enumerate the uh, attack surface. There's also a vendor that is capable to do a network analysis out of the box. So you mirror the traffic of your uh, applications, and then uh, the, the tool will try to generate attack surface from that, or the let's say the API specification automatically. Yeah, there are many options actually. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, okay, there's another question. Is there an open source project or paper that estimates the web attack surface only through browser level analysis? Like for instance, uh, JavaScript code, let's say. Okay, I think um, maybe uh, I, I need to know the context of the question. So I assume there are two, two possibilities. Uh, maybe the, uh, the person is asking about uh, a client side vulnerabilities related to Java, JavaScript code in the browser, or maybe uh, asking about how we can do a text surface enumerations from API calls to the JavaScript and client side. So it will have different answer. So, so the answer I for think, the first, yep. I think uh, I I believe uh, the second one is oh. what the uh, oh, I, I mean the audience I mean the participant uh, okay. wishes to know. Okay, I think uh, there are really many tools that are capable to do that, doing a crawling, right? Crawling from client side. Um, there, there is a traditional crawling tool where it, 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 it's not using uh, JavaScript or client side code. It's only try to read the HTML and then parse the HTML, get all the links, and then crawl through the links and un until it ends, right? But there's also a tool that can uh, use headless browser because it's using headless browser. It's capable to read all the Ajax requests or client side uh, API requests and then lock all the API requests. But again, it's very limited because you need to yeah open all the pages first to get all the uh, all the API calls from client side, and there is no guarantee it can cover one hundred percent. But it's still worth to be used, especially if you are still in the beginning of doing application attack surface management. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I hope that answered your question. Uh, so do we have any other question? No. Okay. So um, thank you so much for Eski for your uh, presentation. Uh, I think you didn't share your contact details or something if uh, people could reach out to you, maybe, or if it's, I think it would be available in the Vova app, so people can definitely reach out to you. Yeah, you uh, thank you for, thank you for presenting, uh, like the details and answering the questions as well. 
So uh, thank you on behalf of OWASP 2023 Global Appsec Conference. Thank you. Okay, thank you everyone.